Anyone know what that was? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. That was, in fact, the acapella version of the Office theme song. Guys, what's up and welcome. It's a wonderful, wonderful February 10th. It's a Wednesday night and we are here ready to go. If you're online, good to see you. Zachary, you out there? Anyways, um, guys, we are going to have an awesome night tonight. We're going to be playing some games. We're going to be learning about some new things coming up. Dude, so many good things coming up that you guys need to know about. Uh, winners for games, new music that you haven't heard before. Um, it's a good time and a lesson. Oh, yes, a lesson. Those of you who were here last week, you know that we started our talks on sexuality. Yes, the word, you're probably giggling. Uh, the word sexuality, sex, it really <laughs> makes us squirmy. But I want you guys to know that sex is a good gift, a good gift from our creator, from God. And we want to search the scriptures. We want to ask God what he wants us to do with our sexuality. Last week, we talked about God as a good father. Do you believe it? Do you believe that God has our best intentions at heart? And this week, we're going to be talking about the authority of God. Do we actually believe that God has the right to tell us what we should do uh, with all of life, including our sexuality? And honestly, some of you out there might be saying, no, I don't think God has the authority to tell us what we should do with our bodies. And these are questions that you guys can bring up in front of your uh, leaders. Don't be afraid if you're thinking like, you know what, I just... I think this is lame. I just don't agree with that. I'd love for you guys to bring that up. Don't worry. Don't think you're like the worst. We're all figuring it out. We're all at very different places. If you are feeling like you are the only person who thinks a certain way in this area, don't be don't be like that. It's okay. You can bring up these questions to your leaders. Uh, we're all different, and I'm excited to talk about the authority of God and Scripture in regards to sexuality tonight. I've said it again, guys. You're going to have to get comfortable with that word because I just keep saying it. Sex, sexuality, we're talking about it. Wonderful. Guys, huge events coming up. I got to let you know. We've been talking about one of them that is just the signups that you need to get on. It's Flower City. City work camp. Guys, we are going to be praising God. We're going to be going into the city. We're going to be partnering with the inner city community uh, to do the uh, Lord's work, to work on some houses, to preach the gospel. It's an amazing time. Seventh and eighth graders, you can sign up for this as well. But high schoolers, if you haven't signed up, you should. That's going to be June 28th through July 2nd. What else is coming up? Yes. Guys, there's something coming up super soon that you need to know about. You ready? We are going to be doing a Sledtastic Saturday coming up February 20th. Um, we have rented a lodge at the top of Menden Ponds Park. We're going to be sledding all day. Uh, you know, it's going to be a blast from noon on Saturday to how, whenever the night comes that night. We are going to be sledding. And you're probably like, dang, how do I be a part of this? Well, uh, ask your small group leader because your small groups are probably going to be, I suggest, going at certain times of the day you know sixth grade girls you're at that two two o'clock to four o'clock slot uh senior guys you are going at night because you want to go uh, tubing in the dark with glow in the dark tape glow sticks everything glow tubing that's what you want to do so just talk with your leader at what time would be best for you there's going to be hot chocolate there's going to be just amazing things come on that event is at the end of february break so remember February 17th, we do not have youth group. Uh, next week, do not come to youth group because we will not be there, but we will be sledding the following Saturday. So do not come to youth group on the 17th, but we're excited to see you on the 24th. What else is coming up? There's something that I'm forgetting. Oh, there is a movie night. Uh, it's Nomeo and Juliet. So for those of you who love that movie, there's a free family night movie night uh, February uh, 28th. And you guys can come to the sanctuary at 4 o'clock. There it is. And watch that together as a group. So, guys, there's tons of things. Flower City signups. There's uh, the Sledtastic Saturday at Menden Ponds. That's going to be awesome. There's going to be the family movie night, uh, which is Nomeo and Juliet uh, coming on the 28th. And, guys, one other big announcement. 
we are going to be having student night in the sanctuary on March 3rd. That's right, it's going to be big time. We're going into the sanctuary and we are actually going to be joined by Bethel uh, the Nexus Youth Program at Bethel. So uh, Max, the drummer, some of you guys know him. He's the man. He is the youth pastor over at Bethel, and he's going to be joining us with his youth group. We are going to have a blast. We're going to be playing games. We're going to have extended worship. We're going to be uh, learning about justice. It's going to be a blast. March 3rd, do not miss it, okay? March 3rd, uh, that is going to be a time and a half, if I do say so myself. Wonderful, guys. Well, we are going to go into a segment that you sixth grade girls, the sixth grade girls requested make its way back. So it's time for, oh, that's fascinating. Woo! Wow. Hey, guys, I'm here with... Victoria Farmiga. Zoe. So, guys, I have one question for you. Spell any word other than Zootopia. C-O-W. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because just any word other than Zootopia. L O R D. Lo oh, okay. Fascinating. A cow lord. My favorite type of lord. Fascinating. <laughs> Spell any word other than photosynthesis. T A G. The and? A L O. The all. <laughs> what is the? Those are the most boring words. Fascinating. The all was my brother's middle name. Spell any word other than beryllium. Hyena. You gotta spell it. Cat. B-U-T. B-U-T, but... What? I guess I... You just... What else? C-A-T. A butt cat. <laughs> Wonderful. What else? O-L-I-V-I-A. Olivia? Your name? Yeah. Olivia <laughs> Butt Cat, my favorite children's book character. Fascinating. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm here with... And I have one question for you guys. Spell any word other than Star Trek. Hi. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> What else? Track star. Star. I don't know how to spell star. She doesn't know how to spell star, everyone. Oh, man. Fascinating. Spelling's always hard. I just use autocorrect. All right, we'll see ya. Hey, guys, I'm here with... Isaac. And... Reese. And I have one question for you guys. Spell any... Yeah, there he is. Spell anything other than Groundhog's Day. H I uh, and G I, I don't know. G I, what is that word? Guy? The guy? He's not the guy because he can't spell. Fascinating! And fascinating it is indeed. You guys handled that question well, and we are going to be moving through tonight. So, you know what time it is. It's time for my favorite segment, or at least my cat's favorite segment. It's time for Where's Zuko? Where is Zuko gonna be today? Where is Zuko gonna be today? The vent or the porch or up high or down too low? All we gotta ask is, where's Zuko? Nailed it. All right, guys, Zuki's up here, and I asked Kelsey if he ever jumps from here to here, of which she said yes, yes. and I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're gonna make him fall. What if he doesn't make it? Oh my gosh. You want the gel? Okay, it was here when I thought, no chance. <laughs> then this happened. And really, I should have never underestimated because this is from further away, from the bottom, and just with all the majesty of a male rhino, he just leaps atop this refrigerator. No problem. Well, what a treat that little critter is. He is a wonderful little cat, um, and every day is an adventure with him, for sure. All right, guys, we played a game last week called Mandalorian. DeLorean or Mandolin, where you guys identified uh, pixelated pictures to see if they were going to be the Mandalorian, a DeLorean, the amazing car from Back to the Future, or a Mandolin, which is a old school stringed instrument. I don't know. Some of you mu music people are like, I play Mandolin. 
That's the voice you probably have if you play mandolin. I don't know. Um, and we need to announce the winners. And guys, I have to say, uh, we I put up a picture at the end and said, gave you 20 seconds to analyze it and send in your results. And uh, guys, I think I went too hard on you. <laughs> like the week before we did Where's Bernie and like 90% of you got it right. This week, guys, I put up the picture. Let's just say that no one got it perfectly correct not a single person <laughs> so i have to come up with a creative way to give points and that's on me i you i put a challenge before you that was insurmountable unsurmountable insurmountable um but i am going to give away points because there are some of you who did better than others and if you remember this is what i said i said we're gonna i'm gonna show you a picture but this picture has nothing to do with the mandolin, a DeLorean, or a Mandalorian. And if you don't believe me, this is what I said. Here we go, play it back. Uh, picture, it has nothing to do with the Mandalorian, a DeLorean, or a mandolin. Nothing to do with the Mandalorian, a DeLorean, or a mandolin. So, I'm gonna give at least one point to any group who didn't put down Mandolin, DeLorean, or Mandalorian. So, let's see what you guys got. Um, here we go. The senior boys said a, a Snoopy and a bird. They're like, this is Snoopy and a bird. Um, that was a, I'm going to give you a point because that's not a mandolin, DeLorean, or a Mandalorian. Uh, the seventh grade girl said a toucan. I like that answer. A toucan bird. Is this a toucan bird? Uh, eighth grade boy said rubber chicken. Eighth grade girls said mandolin. Oh, didn't follow the directions. I'm so sorry. I love you girls, but that was not a correct answer. Uh, the 10th grade girl said a duck. The 9th grade boy said a mandolin. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. You guys didn't follow the prompt. Uh, the 10th grade boy said a mandolin. Oh, man, guys. Uh, sorry, 10th grade boys. Stonks only go up. Okay, uh, the senior girl said a DeLorean. Guys, we got to listen. <laughs> it's okay. Um, DeLoreans are pretty cool anyways. Uh, <laughs> what else did we have? The 6th grade girl said Tweety Bird. Hey, I like that answer. You're going to receive points for that. Um, I'll be double checking to make sure I didn't miss anyone, but those are the answers I got from you guys. So all these groups, I'm going to throw up the leaderboard, got one point. And now it's time to reveal what was that picture. You can see it unpixelating right now. Can you figure it out? You might know it by now. Yes, that's right. It's Rafiki holding Simba. And you know what, guys? I thought this was going to be much easier because when you go from the pixelated to the actual picture, it makes sense. But it was not easy. But anyways, those are the points being awarded. Good stuff. And you know what? That is all we're going to give away tonight. But tonight is going to be a amazing time because we are going to play a game um, that in your small groups, it's going to be legendary, we'll say. Because it is nearly Valentine's Day. Yes, the 14th is Valentine's Day. It's nearly Valentine's Day. And there's one, one person, one creature who never received a Valentine's card last year. And that is Fire Lord Zuko McGinnis, our cat Zuko, wherever he is. He's in the trip. He's in the get. He's in the trash. Uh, he never received a Valentine's card. So this is the challenge for tonight. You guys in your small groups are going to make the greatest Valentine's card for Zuko that you can. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do so. But guys, I'm not just talking like, you know, roses are red, violets are blue. Cat's name is Zuko. You're not a cat too. I don't know. I'm not talking just that. I need you guys to be on the sides, cutting out hearts. Maybe someone's folding an origami something, but it has to be a complete like card package. It can't be like a bunch of little things. Like glue these things together, make it super creative. Uh, someone who's good at words, write down something awesome. It's for Zuko. Uh, this is the challenge. We're going to see next week. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he even decides who the winner is. Um, but I am excited. Those of you online, I want to see your, your best written poetry for Zuko. Um, guys, it is time. You guys are antsy, ready to go. Get nimble. Be quick, because we're about to do a Valentine's for Zuko. Let's get ready in three, two, one. Get to it!
right, I need you guys to slide those under your doors. If it doesn't slide perfectly under your door, go ahead and open it, place it in the hallway, and I'll come and grab it during worship. But guys, I'm excited to see, Zuko is excited for his Valentine's cards. Um, that will be a fun, fun time. Wonderful. All right, guys, we are going to transition into a time of worship. If you remember last week, uh, I talked about it, how it's Black History Month, the month of February, and that means that this month we're going to be celebrating a new style, a different style of worship um, that we're not always used to here in Penfield. Um, and one of our students, Zippy, she's amazing, wonderful voice. I mean, last week, so good. Um, so we're going to hear another song that she chose uh, and wanted to share with you guys. So I'm excited to hear that song. Um, I'll pray as we head into our time of worship. Bow with me. Uh, dear Lord, we know that um, we know that you are good. We know that um, you write our stories, Lord. I pray that this night we can come before you with our thoughts, questions, concerns, doubts, um, with just our hearts, Lord, to lay them before you. Um, I pray that as we listen to this song that we can um, just appreciate and be in worship and praise um, in a different style of music, Lord. Help us see the beauty of, of bringing cultures together, Lord, and, and help us uh, understand you on a deeper level. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, time for worship. Maybe I succeeded a little I jumped up from the floor to the middle You think I want the credit? I don't Cause the glory, it ain't made for me, no I know who sits on the throne Who makes the stage and writes the song And I know I couldn't do this on my own And as much as I complain I've seen more sunshine than rain And I could thank my lucky stars But that's not where my blessings are No, they come from the Father's heart Not the sky, not chance But truth is, I'm not lucky, I'm loved 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 Today I'm in my happy place And I know it didn't happen by mistake I love how he wrote my life And I love how he sees my heart So I fall to my knees and I say that I'm grateful for every morning star So I don't thank my lucky stars Cause that's not where my blessings are No, they come from The Father's heart Not the sky, not chance But truth is I'm not lucky, I'm loved 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 From the very beginning this life that I'm living was part of your plan all along So I could thank my lucky stars Cause that's not where my blessings are No, they come from the Father's heart Not the sky, not chance But truth is, I'm not lucky, I'm loved 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 Sing yes Jesus loves me Sing yes Jesus loves me Sing yes Jesus
not where my blessings are No, they come from the Father's heart Not the sky, not chance But truth is, I'm not lucky, I'm loved My name is Jessica, and this week we're starting a brand new series. And the name of this series is a word most of you know and use a lot. Like, a lot. The series is called Awkward. 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 All right, now this is getting awkward. So if you're anything like me and my friends, you've experienced some pretty awkward situations in your lifetime so far. Here's a few examples. Seeing my teacher when I was out to eat with my family. Waving at someone who I thought was waving at me, but they weren't. Hey! Oh, I don't know you. Ugh. So awkward. My dad telling dad jokes when my friends were over. Learning about the human growth and development unit in health class. Ew. Accidentally responding to the wrong group chat with a funny text I meant to send just to my best friend. Putting ketchup on my plate at dinner and the bottle made a fart noise. I agree. Those are pretty awkward. They're cringy and uncomfortable and embarrassing. And because of that, they make us feel awkward too. I think for most of us, awkward moments are something we try to avoid. Today though, we're going to lean into one of the things that near the top of your list of awkward stuff, attraction and sexual desires. Yes, that's right. We're gonna be talking about sex here at church. Awkward, right? While you might feel weird or uncomfortable or strange or even awkward talking about things like sex, let me assure you that you're not alone. In fact, these feelings are so normal. And even though it might be easier to avoid the awkward moments of having to hear the word sex or sexual desires at church, we believe that this is the best place to have these conversations like this because we care about you and want to help you understand what this stuff means for you, even if it might be a little awkward along the way. Now, there are a few words that are going to come up a lot. So let's start by getting on the same page about what these words mean. First. Let's talk about attraction. When I say attraction, I mean a feeling of liking or being interested in someone or something. You're also going to hear me mention sexual desires throughout the series. Here's what I mean by that. The word desire simply means a strong feeling of wanting to have or do something. And when I talk about sexual desires, I'm talking about sexual things that we feel or think about or want to do. Let me give you some actual examples of what all of this might look like. When you think someone is really, really cute, or when you wanna sit next to someone because you just wanna be near them, or when you get that nervous feeling in your stomach when you talk to a certain somebody, or when you think about that person you like all the time, even when you aren't with them, or when that person sends you a DM or Snapchats you a cute picture of themselves, or when you have a desire to express your feelings through kissing or touching, or when you think about doing things beyond kissing or touching someone that you're attracted to, or when you're tempted to look at pictures you find attractive, all that stuff, they're examples of desires that you may be experiencing right now. And here's the thing about that. Having this kind of attraction, these kinds of desires, is both normal and natural. In fact, God actually gave us the ability to experience that kind of attraction and desire. Here's what I want you to know right away. This is not easy. I get it. Sometimes the stuff we see or hear makes us feel awkward. Or maybe we wanna know more. Maybe we're curious, but we've never talked about it before because we're not sure if it's even okay to talk about. Or maybe we don't like talking about it because we don't understand it. After all, we might not be experiencing attraction or desires, and we may not have a lot of interest in things like dating and sex. That's okay. Here's why it's so important for us to talk about this stuff here at church. Attraction and desires are not bad things. And being curious and having questions about them isn't wrong either. It's not something that we have to be embarrassed or feel awkward about. In fact, it's actually part of the way we were designed. See, we were all created by God to experience attraction and have sexual desires. We were made to express our desires in ways that are good and loving and natural. That nervous or excited feeling you get when you like someone, 
when your hand bumps theirs or even when you think about them, that's a good thing and a normal thing that you were created to feel. The problem comes when we're not sure how to respond to those desires or how to even talk about them with someone else. But trust me, there's an answer. There's a specific plan that God created for attraction and sexual desires. And even if it's awkward, I wanna talk about it today because it's something I really want you to understand. We're going to look at some wise advice about sexual desires written by a really important guy named Paul. Now, Paul wrote a lot of books in the New Testament, which is the part of the Bible that's about Jesus and what happened after he was on earth. These books written by Paul were actually letters that he originally wrote to the Christians to help them understand how to live and follow Jesus together. See, following Jesus was a new thing back then. And because of that, people needed help figuring it out. Paul was really good at helping them see what mattered to God and what should matter to those who follow him as a result. And honestly, I think we'd all say we need that kind of help still today. That's why I think we can turn to Paul's words to help us understand a little more about what we're supposed to do with our God-given desires. Take a look. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I know that's a lot in just two verses, so let's break it down. Paul started off by talking about who God is. He's someone who offers us mercy. Mercy simply means getting compassion and kindness when you don't deserve it. When your teacher doesn't take points off your homework for being late, even though those are the rules, she's showing you mercy by not giving you the bad grade you deserved. We all mess up sometimes because we're all human. We make mistakes and wrong decisions that don't always line up with what God has in mind for us. We end up choosing to do things that we want to instead of doing what God wants for us. That's called sin and because of sin, we all deserve to be separated from God. But instead, God had mercy on us. He sent Jesus to save us and bring us back into a relationship with Him. That is the ultimate act of mercy. Paul was saying that because God has been merciful to us, we can know that He is kind to us. That means we can trust Him when He tells us the best way to live. We can respond to what God has done for us by living the way He calls us to live. He wants us to live with integrity. And integrity means doing the right thing in all circumstances, even if no one is watching. And when it comes to our sexual desires, he wants us to live with sexual integrity. That means choosing to respond to the sexual things we feel, think, and desire in a way that respects ourselves and others and God. Paul explained that we should use our sexual desires in ways that are pleasing to God. It's not that we are supposed to get rid of our desires or ignore them. It's natural to have them, but we should respond to our desires in ways that are good and pleasing and honorable to God, ourselves, and others. That's sexual integrity. You see, God designed sex as a way for a married couple to connect with each other on a deeper level. It's a way to express their love for each other. And when we set boundaries and respect others and ourselves, we're choosing to honor God's plan for sex. In other words, what we do with our desires matters. Sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. It's one thing to read verses like this and hear messages about God's good plan for our desires, but it's another thing to actually know how to live it out on a daily basis. When we find ourselves curious to watch that video or interested in holding hands with that new person at school or drawn in by those pictures on Snapchat, or we're just curious about the ways our bodies are changing, then what do we do? How do we actually respond in a way that honors God? Well, let's look back at the last part of Paul's letter here. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. We can start by renewing or changing our minds. We can ask God to show us His plan for our desires. We can ask Him to change the way we see it, to understand it better, to notice how His plan impacts our lives. And we can trust His plan because it is good. See, when it comes to all of this attraction stuff, God is actually for you. The way He asks us to honor Him with our desires is a good thing. He wants to help us express our desires in ways that are healthy and positive for us and for others. And when we start by changing our minds and asking God to help us see things the way He does, we'll be able to pay more attention. We'll be able to notice when our responses to those desires are off. And we'll be able to notice when someone else is encouraging or even forcing us to act in a wrong way, a way that doesn't fit with what we know God wants for us when it comes to sex and sexual desires. There may even be some of you who feel like the choice has been taken from you. Maybe you've been shown pictures or videos that you didn't ask to see. 
and that confused you. It made you feel things you weren't sure about or even ready for, and it's maybe even something you feel a lot of guilt about. If that's you, let me just remind you that it's never too late to choose sexual integrity for yourself. The choice is still yours, no matter what has happened in the past. And someone like your group leader would be a great person to talk to about some of the things you may be feeling right now. Or maybe you've experienced sexual abuse or harassment. If that's you, I am so sorry. What's been done to you is not your fault. What's been done to you does not impact your sexual integrity. Something that has been done to you does not determine if you are honoring yourself or others or God with your own desires. So if that's something you're dealing with, I'd love to encourage you to talk to your group leader about it. They want to see you get the help and support you deserve. Because for everyone, the truth is this, God loves you. He created you to experience attraction and desires. And what you do with your desires matters. So. What can we do to make sure what we do with our desires matters? Well, here are a few thoughts. First, choose sexual integrity. Remember, sexual integrity is choosing to respond to the sexual things we feel, think, or desire in a way that respects ourselves, others, and God. You have a chance right now to set a standard for how you're going to respond to your desires. You get to decide how you're going to act, what pictures you're gonna post or forward on, what you're going to wear or not wear, the words you choose to use when you speak. You get to choose what you're going to watch or look at or think about. And maybe up until now, you found yourself not choosing sexual integrity. Maybe you've made decisions that haven't honored God with your desires. Or maybe you've even found yourself in situations that you didn't expect or ask for. Situations that you weren't ready for and didn't seek out for yourself. For any of us, the good news is, is that no matter what we've chosen or dealt with in the past, we can always begin to choose sexual integrity today then pay attention. You know, God has a plan when it comes to your desires. God designed sex as a way for a married couple to connect with each other on a deeper level. It's a way to express their love for one another. So when you hear or see something that doesn't match up to that plan, pay attention. Notice things that push you or tempt you to not honor yourself or others or God with your own desires. Finally, talk about sexual desires in positive and appropriate ways with adults you trust. They can help you set healthy boundaries and they are a safe place to process struggles or questions you have about this stuff. You might not think of your group leader as an expert on this topic, but I promise they have more wisdom and insight than you think. And besides that, they love you and want what's best for you when it comes to sex and sexual desires. Okay, so I hope that wasn't as awkward as you thought it would be.